remember the sixth fruit of salvation from yesterday? The first two related to salvation, two are related to relationship, and the last two relation are related to uh, uh, obeying God. Can you tell me again? First one is what? Continual repentance. The next one? Continual trusting God. And the next one? Relationship with God. And the next one? To love God. And then the last two? Obey God. And the last one? Bear fruit. Okay, very good. Let's say, go through that once again. And this is something not just we know, but we do it. Okay? That when we are saved, we are saved by grace through faith. But when we are saved, then we bear these fruits. First one again. Continue repentance. Continue trust in God. Next one. Relationship with God. And then love God. Obey God. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. Very good. Are you bearing fruit? If today Jesus comes back, are you ready? Or do you go to him empty-handed? In Chinese, we have an expression. You go to a friend's home and then you only bring two bunches of bananas. That means you have brought nothing. Mm -hmm. So you come to Jesus and say, I brought two bunches of bananas and not much. And I hope we'll all come to God and God will say you're a good and faithful servant. Now, in order to be able to <coughs> bear fruit, God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very helpful in our ministry. It's helpful to our personal life to have a close relationship with Him and also to pray for people to experience God. And in 1998, when the evangelist laid hand on me and I experienced great power, like electricity, enter me and great love filled my heart. And I was touched greatly and cried for a long time. And I said, I didn't know I can have that relationship with God. And I spent a long time praying every day after that. And every time, since that time I prayed, every time I cry out of Jesus or think of Jesus, I can feel His power. And I can now, I can feel His joy. <coughs> that I can, every time, <laughs> the joy will just flow out. And I can feel the comfort and the love. Oh, hallelujah. I can feel any time. And it's great encouragement. And then when you pray for people, you can lead the children to Christ. And you can lead your friends, your family members. And, and also God can bring healing. Now, some of you, maybe your heart is not totally open yet. Or maybe you didn't know how to experience God. So you said, I didn't experience anything. But a number of you experienced the presence of God too. You know, we, we pray for more people. And I've seen so many people experience peace, love, joy, uh, comfort, and uh, burdens go away, and joy. I've seen groups of people filled with joy, and healing, and demons driven out. And one lady here, that she felt sharp pain when I prayed for her. And then it went away gradually. And it's, it's something, it could be you know emotional burdens, or it could be uh, some sins or some uh, worries or some uh, demonic power. With Jesus Christ, we don't have to worry about anything. So today I'll talk about how to do evangelism and how to pray for people for revival by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And because of time limitation, you know, I can just go through this quickly. But first I want to say, God can be experienced. Can you say it with me? God can be experienced. And we can experience this peace. This is most common. Quiet, feeling very quiet. That's in John 14, 27. Peace, I live with you. My peace, I give you. Amen. And many people, when they pray, oh, it's just so quiet. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can, you know, when you put down your burdens, you come to Jesus, you can experience His peace. And many people feel the burdens go away. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. And you feel like the heart is free of burdens. And that's many people's experience. And also, inner healing. That means removal of the sadness or, or uh, depression. In uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3, it talks about the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me. 
to preach the good news to the poor and to send me to bind up or heal the brokenhearted, to heal the brokenhearted, to declare freedom for the captives. When people are in bondage from drugs or uh, sex immorality or any kind of sins and burdens, that God can release them from these burdens and comfort all who mourn and also the oil gladness instead of mourning. And I have seen so many people touched by the Holy Spirit. I've seen big, tall men, looks like very, you know, very steady, very stern. And then when they experience the Holy Spirit, Jesus cried. And you don't imagine that from a big, tall man. And they just cry and touch by the love of the Holy Spirit. And also, Jesus has said that, you know, go to all the nations in Mark chapter 16 and preach the gospel to all creation. And then, all those who are believed and are baptized shall be saved. And then, miracles will follow those who believe. And in Jesus' name, they will cast out demons, and they lay hand on the sick, they will be healed. That you see p demons driven out, and also people will be healed. And, and you go online, YouTube, and look for Pastor Yip, Y-I-P, Y-I-P, Pastor Yip. And then you can see some of the videos of people, demons driven out. Many of these videos there are Chinese, but some are English. And you can look for two playlists. One is English <coughs> Revival Sermons. English, can you say it with me? English <laughs> Revival <laughs> Sermons. And the other one is Experience Holy Spirit. Experience, say it. Experience Holy Spirit. And inside there are videos in Chinese and in English of people experience great joy. There was one woman who, 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 who was filled with joy and laughed out loudly. And then she cried when she had repentance. And then say, oh, I haven't loved God enough. And then she was filled with joy again. And then filled with, uh, and then cry again. And then filled with joy again and cry again. And I, I have seen people experience God in so many ways and demons driven out from people. And you too, when you have faith, you'll be surprised what you can do. One time I prayed for someone with drug addiction. And he said to me, when you pray for me, it felt better than when I took drugs. It felt better when I took drugs. It felt so, such a comfort, feeling of comfort over him that he felt it was better than uh, taking drugs. And I prayed for people and people went I feel like they go to heaven, go to another place. And I pray for people who had, uh, who was taking people therapy for cancer. And he said he was in pain. But after the prayer, he said he felt great comfort. You know, God is very, very real. And God wants to bless you. And you pray for the children. Last year, uh, I had more time to pray for the children. And, they, and then many of them said that they experienced the peace or the comfort or joy. And He is very real. And I hope you would hunger for God. You hunger for God. Now how to have the anointing of God? It's very important. First, we repent of our sins. Say it together with me. We repent of our sins. Because that's a, God doesn't like sin. When we live in sin, when God comes to us, He doesn't like the sin. It stinks. He doesn't like it. And the, first, the second thing is, believe in the Bible. Believe in the Bible. Say it with me. Believe in the Bible. Believe in the promises in the Bible. That God promised all these things will come true. That God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. God said it and it will come true. And I've experienced His blessings every way. And God will bless you also. So you hold on to the promises of God and read the Bible. The Bible will lead you to follow the truth and follow the way of God that God is a wonderful plan in your life. And also, have faith. Believe that God is right here. Say it with me. God, God is, is right, right here. God is in front of me and behind me. Say it. God is in front of me and behind me. He's laying His hand on me. He's laying His hand on me. He's blessing me. He has a wonderful plan for my life. He has a wonderful plan for my life. He wants that plan to be fulfilled. He wants when, the plan to be fulfilled. when I follow him and obey him, when I follow him and the plan him, will be fulfilled. The plan is fulfilled. You know, if we don't love God, the plan will not come true. But when we follow God, the plan will come true. Amen. Like you see your principal Rachel, she had the vision of reaching children and students with 
uh, the, with the schools, and she, God has expanded Amen. her uh, territory, that Amen. she built up another school and have more ways to reach out to people. And you don't know what you can do one day. Mm. Don't underestimate yourself. If you follow God, if you don't follow God, it won't go anywhere. That's but if you follow God, it will keep going more, you know, higher and higher. Mm. And also to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you must worship in spirit and in truth. That's true. That you worship from all your heart. Now the spirit is divided into, includes the spirit and the soul. And the soul includes the mind, Say it with me, the mind, the, mind, the, will, the will, and our emotions. And our emotions. So first worship with all our mind. Mm -hmm. Worship with all our mind that my mind agrees with God, mm -hmm. agrees with the Bible. And the second is the will. I want to serve God. I want to follow God. Now, we don't all have to be preachers. But in your position, you can bless people so your will to follow God. And then feelings, emotions that... Do you have feelings with your friends? Yes. You feel good, right? Yes. Do you have feelings with your home? Yes. You feeling with your bed? You like your bed? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now, if we have feelings with all these things, should we have feelings with God? Yes. Then when you think of God, you say, I like Him. Mm. Because He creates so delicious food. He creates so many things for me. Yes. He has blessed me so many ways. Amen. Then you say, God, you're so good and have feelings, good feelings. Let me tell you, every time I think of God, oh, I like you. <laughs> every time I think of God, I like it. That way, the more open you are, the more you experience God. Amen. And then also, the Spirit. Now, the Spirit is hard to describe. The Spirit is how we relate to God. That in Psalm 103, verse 1, Psalm 103, verse 1, it says that all that is in me, praise His holy name. Amen. All that is in me, that is... That includes the spirit and the soul. All that is inside my flesh, inside my body, my spirit, worship. So how do you do that? You worship from all your heart. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> it's not just worship with your head, not just worship with your mind, but worship with all your spirit, all that is inside you. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. <laughs> and then sooner or later you experience him. Now, I don't have time to pray for everyone. First, I ask for two volunteers, one woman and one man, who is willing to come out, and I'll pray for you first. And then the rest, whoever wants to stay behind a little bit, I'll pray for you. So any two persons who hunger for the Holy Spirit, you say, I want to have this close relationship with God. So every time when I pray, I can experience Him. I know how I to experience Him. And then also I can pray for people. The Holy Spirit comes so that we can be His witness to the end of the world. So are there two persons who are willing to come out that I'll pray for you, demonstrate to pray for you? Any two persons? Anyone who hunger for God? Do you hunger for God? Or you don't hunger for God? And hope you don't mind the other people's eyes. You don't mind that. You don't have to mind. You know, as a pastor, I go to meetings, I'm free, I'm totally free. And Amen. you see that, I just laugh, I don't mind mm. what people think of me. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, anyone who wants to come out, and then I pray for you. Now, if not, I have only, thank God, okay? Any, any, any man? Come forward, please. Come forward, come forward. Or any other person, come forward. Any other question? Okay, close your eyes. Relax. Now when I pray for people, when I pray for people, I relax my whole person. I open. I relax my whole person and I reach out to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From my spirit, I just relax. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I praise your name. Hallelujah. You might notice 
When we pray, you can see that she's, her body's swaying. The, her body's swaying. That you can, that the power of the Holy Spirit can move people's body. That in the Bible it says that, that people fall under the power of God. That John and Saul fell under the power of God. And also people can experience His peace and His comfort. Oh. The most important thing is that you pay attention to what you experience. And every time you pray, every time you pray, you enter that condition again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let me ask you, have you experienced anything in your heart and over your body? Do you experience peace, quietness? Peace, quietness, comfort? Do you feel comforted in your heart? And you feel comfort over your body. Now you open your heart more. Relax. Open your heart more. Oh. Open your heart more. Hunger for God. Lord Jesus, I want you. Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, I want you. Hallelujah. Yes, you. Praise the Lord. The more open you are, the more you experience.